Did you know that ESS stands for Electrostatic Sound Systems? Because most people don't know that. ESS, the company that makes nothing but chip DACs, digital to analog converters these days, basically all of the best DAC chips on the market are ESS. Before they did that, they made stuff like this. This big, probably somewhere around 40 pound, 500 watt stereo power amplifier rated at 250 watts per channel at eight ohms, has a damping factor somewhere around 800, I believe. It's, it's a beast. And this is the kind of stuff that ESS made before they made DAC chips. This thing's probably from either the late 60s or the early 70s. It's ultra, super, mega rare. <laughs> I have never seen one for sale online other than an old listing from like a European uh, used hi-fi or vintage hi-fi website. And that one did not have this wooden hardwood like awesome cabinet that one did not have that so on this side here we've got RCA in binding posts another RCA in and then binding post outputs these are uh, standard binding posts five-way binding posts I have banana plugs going in there just the standard mono price speaker cable and Amazon basics RCA's I'm being fed a digital source right now which I'm sure for some people is going to be considered heresy, putting a digital source into this style of an amplifier. It's got these gigantic aluminum cooling fins sticking off the back. And then each channel has 12 output transistors and they're just there, they're just exposed. Um, I bet I don't think that this thing would pass any kind of safety certifications of the modern day because you can actually feel a very minor electric charge coming off of those if you touch them while the amplifier is on. It's crazy. And then on this side here, we've got a beefy power cable going into it. This is not the original power cord. The original one was just like a little lamp cord. I actually had this thing serviced at a place here in my hometown called Elite Service. They replaced the power cord and some of the capacitors and stuff, you know, regular um, amplifier related maintenance things that just need to be done. And this is where the three fuses are. And uh, I don't remember what this does right here. Some kind of a selector switch, probably for voltage. But yeah, it... Uh, Sounds really good. I have it hooked up to a pair of modern Canton high-end audio speakers and it sounds good. I'm playing classical music right now just because I don't want someone to uh, attempt to take down my video. So DRM free classical music for the wind there. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. It's got a brushed stainless faceplate with this strip that goes across the front and then you've got VU meters I am running pretty quiet right now so basically what it's doing right now is not even like close to registering on the VU meters I have the gain knobs on the amp about two-thirds of the way up there is some noise from the amplifier because it is vintage vintage so there is a little bit of a hum so turning the gain knobs down to about two-thirds like that almost completely eliminates that and yeah it's it's ultra rare the person the one that I saw on a European website they were asking 1500 euro for it and that one did not have the original wooden cabinet on it it was just because that wooden cabinet slide slides off I'm not gonna do that on video because I don't have four hands and it would take two to hold the camera and two to actually slide that cabinet off so you're just gonna have to take my word for that or possibly check out the pictures on the audio gone listing because I may put pictures up on there showing the wooden cabinet being taken off so you can see what it looks like on the inside 
But yeah, I'm going to be selling this on Audiogon. I'm not quite sure exactly what I'm going to ask for it yet. But I, even though I like this amp, it's big and it takes up a lot of space and it's heavy and I'm gonna be moving. So I don't need it anymore. And that's it.